Did you know that an aging population means a rise in orthopedic procedures? An estimated half million total joint knee replacements are performed annually here in the U.S., including right here at the Orthopedic Institute of Central Maine. And joining us now is Dr. Jeff Bush. Nice to meet you, Dr. Bush. Thanks for having me. You're just back from doing a total hip replacement, which sounds very involved, and it's, you've got a That's show right. and tell. That's right, this is a, a fresh x-ray here. This is a 50-some-year-old guy who actually was on a bike, hit by a car a couple years ago, and sustained some fractures around his hip. And initially it didn't look that bad, but over the past couple years he's gone and developed very advanced arthritis, mostly secondary to the trauma. And so we brought him to the ORC today and replaced his hip. And after this, will he be just back on the he bike? Should, he should do well. I'd expect him to be back on a bike and up to full activities um, you know, within the next couple of weeks. He'll be here for a day or two. He'll go home tomorrow or the next day. He'll do physical therapy today. He should be on the floor within the hour. And, and within an hour or two of that, we should have him up and walking. And after another day or two, he'll go home. and. What's so impressive is that everything is all here on the floor. I mean, it, you know, the, this, the patient is completely seen right here. There's a, yeah, care the, the care is excellent. I think that's what sort of sets this place apart. Once we, once we schedule them for a procedure, they, they come here and they, they go to a total joint class for a hip or knee replacement. And um, from the moment they get here, they have dedicated orthopedic nurses who are trained in you know, taking care of joint replacement patients and the therapist will see him the day of surgery, get him up and walking. And um, just the combined effort of, of not only those people, but the, uh, you know, the administrators and the other staff who've been involved in really providing a focus on the patients just makes it a, a special place. And this guy, will, he'll, he'll have great care and, and he'll be walking right away and he should do really well. That is fantastic. And you also see people who need help with their spines as well. We do, we do. Dr. Regan's our spine surgeon here and he does uh, a lot of you know, spinal fusions and discectomies and that sort of thing. And uh, I see a lot of hips and knees. I do mostly hip and knee replacement. And um, we're, we've been very happy with the results. I think since we opened the unit, the length of stay for the patients has dropped significantly. Uh, the majority of our patients are leaving um, before three days on the unit, which, which for joint replacement is, is a, pretty, uh, a pretty good number. And, uh, and they're doing well. We, we have you know, low complication rates and, and great staff. And I think part of it is because is of the, uh, just the overall staff and, the, and the, you know, the amazing amount of people that is just focused on the care of one individual patient. And I think it shows with every patient. Well, it's close to noon, and Dr. Michael Regan has already completed three surgeries this morning. Busy day already, Dr. Regan. A, a typical day here at Central Maine Medical Center. And all of those surgeries went well? Yes, yep. I did, uh, all spinal surgeries. And tell me about them. Well, uh, three different people with three different problems. Um, two of the people had uh, pain in their leg. Uh, contrary to popular belief, most spinal surgery is done for patients with pain running from their buttock into their leg. And so two of these patients had pain from the buttock running into the leg and they had pressure on the nerves in the back, both due to disc herniations. Uh, slip disc, as many people know it. And the surgery is a very small incision. Um, and what's called a micro discectomy, and the small piece of disc was taken out to relieve the patient of their leg pain. Um, both patients did fine, and both are going to go home. Both actually are probably in their car already. You've got to be kidding me. It's that quick? Uh, I wouldn't kid you. Yeah. Wow. So both of those are home, and then another one with a fracture. Um, we fixed that through a poke hole in the skin. We can put some cement into the broken bone, and that person will also go home today. Oh, my word. Things have changed, haven't they? In the they world have. Of orthopedics. My God. Sure. I mean, years ago, that was, uh, I mean, many years ago, that was a six or seven day admission. But even, geez, 10 years ago, it, it was uh, a few nights in the hospital. Uh, but now it's just all day surgery. Well, it's a beautiful place you have here. OICM is really gorgeous. You have a whole team approach, really. It has. From the inception of, of the uh, uh, whole OICM, it's always been a team approach. Certainly there was days when the surgeon told everybody what to do, but those days are over. Now we have a top shelf group of nurses, physical therapists that work right here on site. Um, team approach, we all know we're doing. As a matter of fact, this morning I started my day actually by discussing with the nurses. We met at 7 o'clock this morning and we had a little conference. And I actually was 
gave a little um, tutorial on some spinal surgery issues with the nurses. So I sit with, there were probably about 10 nurses. We sat and we talked about a couple of spinal surgery issues so they understand what I'm trying to accomplish, why I'm trying to accomplish it. And then so there's no question about what we're doing and they understand what I do. I understand what they want, ask questions. Really Very important. Very much a team approach and we do that just about every week. Well, I can't leave you without introducing Bonita right here, your girlfriend. I spent a lot of time <laughs> with her putting her together, actually. Really? So Absolutely. she helps a lot, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. We, we put all these plates and screws here on the clavicle, uh, the spine work, um, screws in the back of the cervical spine, the thoracolumbar spine, and down here at the lower spine. We put a halo on her in case she had a fractured neck. We also, a lot of spine shirts are done through the abdomen or through the chest. These plates and screws are put in the front here. Very common to do this kind of work also in the spine. Not to mention all the other bones. Sure is good looking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Regan. Really great meeting you. Thank you. Did you know that shortly after taking office, President Barack Obama instituted what's known as Meaningful Use? It's an incentive program for hospitals and physician's offices to convert paper medical records into electronic medical records by the year 2015. And joining us now is Nancy Grenier. She's the Director of Care Integration for Central Maine Medical Group. And uh, you are using this computerized system every day. Every day. We have clerical staff, we have nurses that help run lists, review the list on patients overdue for screenings, um, and reach out to these patients, encouraging them to come to have those screening stuff. This is all part of an overall program called Saving Lives. I, I mean, it sounds like it's exactly what you're trying to do. Correct. And how, how's it working so far? So far, we've already identified 228 patients with precancerous uh, polyps on their colonoscopies, um, seven colon cancers, four breast cancers, and six patients for urgent surgery for AAA screening, with that AAA screening. So basically, through the computer programs, you're able to then send out to patients urging them to get screenings when maybe otherwise they wouldn't come in for screenings, and you literally are saving lives. We are. Wow, great program. And has it been um, well received? I think the providers enjoy it, uh, like the program, because we're helping them um, manage their patients. I think patients have been fine with it. We've got, we do, do calls occasionally, and some of them are happy we're reaching out to them. I think it's great on a number of levels. I think it sends a message to patients that we care about them. Um, and the encounter of the medical experience is beyond just the exam room. Um, we're reaching out to them. It's population-based medicine um, where uh, we're able to screen patients and reach patients in much greater volumes than we are just by the day daily experience of seeing patients in the exam. There's some wonderful vignettes of individual patients who, who literally their lives have been saved, particularly from the aneurysm screening. Um, we also, as Nancy had mentioned, have picked up some early colon cancers that have saved patients' lives and more major operations in the future. Cardiac care is best when it's close to home and family. That's why in offices throughout Central Maine, the Central Maine Heart and Vascular Institute is bringing advanced cardiac care to where our patients live. Having the opportunity to have care close to where they live provides them with an opportunity to get the best medical care they can get close to home. Specialized care for your heart, from the heart, close to home. Did you know that CMMC has its own museum? from old photos from its opening days back in 1891. In addition to old photos from the hospital's opening days, there are original surgery kits. How'd you like someone cutting into you with one of these knives? They're from 1840. This iron lung from the 1940s was used primarily for polio patients, helping those who couldn't breathe on their own survive. Other relics include a nurse's cap from 1900 and a wheelchair reminiscent of the FDR days. At CMMC, two surgeons are taking on what has become a top killer in the U.S., obesity. 
Each year, it kills almost a half million people. Now, the medical director at Central Maine Bariatric Center, Jamie Loggins, is here right now, and that's uh, that's really kind of a, a, a horrible statistic to hear that. Yeah, Tori, it really is just a, a horrible disease that many people, I think, just don't realize how much of an epidemic it really is in our country. Um, you know, we talk about up to half a million people who will succumb to complications of obesity and its related comorbidities. But if we put that into some perspective, if we were to take, say, colon cancer and breast cancer, put all of the people that may die from those two diseases together, it's about 90,000 people. So we're talking about a disease that claims the lives of more than three times as many people as two major forms of cancer put together. That's really the significance and the proportion of what we're talking about here. Let's talk about the procedures that you offer here. We offer uh, pretty much the whole gamut of what are considered the, the standard weight loss surgery options, and not even just weight loss surgery, but metabolic diseases uh, as well. So we offer gastric bypass operations, adjustable gastric band, uh, vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, these operations obviously are meant to help people live uh, fit, healthier lifestyles. But the interesting thing that we're seeing is the direct effects it can have on some of the medical problems associated with obesity, things like diabetes and high blood pressure, obstructive sleep apnea. We've often thought that if we can make people more fit, we'll see improvements in these medical problems. But interestingly enough, we're seeing these dramatic changes, sometimes within days to just a few weeks of an operation meaning that there's something happening, happening primarily because of the operation, not just because of the weight loss. We've got two patients who you uh, use these surgeries on. We're going to hear from them right now. Um, yeah, uh, my blood pressure was out of control. Uh, I was on a, a, a very strong uh, hypertension medication. I had severe sleep apnea. Um, it was just, things weren't good. I, I was headed for an early death, there's, there's no question. Um, before surgery, I was on me two medications for my diabetes. I was on medication for high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and now I'm on one pill a day, and that's my multivitamin. So those were great stories, and Lee, actually, she has no more diabetes? Is that true for a lot of people? Absolutely. It's the most remarkable thing about some of these procedures that we do is not just the impact it has on their weight, but on the medical problems associated with obesity. Probably nothing greater than, than what we see with type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of people who go through gastric bypass, we see uh, resolution, if not improvement, of their type 2 diabetes, and it's usually within days to weeks. I oftentimes tell people if an operation does nothing for you but cure you of your type 2 diabetes, that alone would almost make this a worthwhile procedure. So it really is an opportunity to just positively affect people on so many different levels. You and Dr. Steve Bang work together here. Does it just give you great joy what you do? Absolutely. The, to be able to be involved with the changes that we see people going through for the whole rest of their life. Uh, you know, when we see patients back in follow-up, that's our favorite day because we feel like we're part of those folks' lives after that. And it's not just Dr. Bang and I, but our whole team. I mean, we're all here dedicated to making and improving the lives of our patients. And that's what our commitment is and that's what our focus on. And the whole team here, really, you can see that they have a passion for what they do. Dr. Loggins. Thank you. Talking with you. You Thank too. You Thank you, very you Tori. Much. Thanks for joining us here for a local discovery spotlight on health here at beautiful Central Maine Medical Center. I'm Tori Ryden. If you like what you saw, check out CMMC's website, cmmc.org, or you can check out our website, localdiscovery.tv. Thanks for joining us. <music>